everyone. Happy April. I'm here today with a very special guest, this American beech tree who is about to go through a very special life process. Um, it's almost leaf out for this beech tree, which means that these buds will soon lengthen and grow. So soon this one will grow to be this size and then leaves will burst out of those and everything will turn green here. So I'm sure all of you have seen that in the spring or noticed it. Um, you may think that it happens at the same time every year, the same for all species, but that's not actually true. Um, the timing is different for each species and can change year to year. And that can have really important cascading effects on a lot of other species and the ecosystem as a whole. The study of annual natural phenomena like leaf out is called phenology and it's a really important um, sector of ecology which is the study of the relations of organisms to each other and to their surrounding ecosystem. And phenology has actually become a lot more important in the last few years because of climate change. All across the world leaf out is happening early and earlier with rising temperatures and this wouldn't be a problem if all species changed at the same rate. For example, if the insects that rely on the new leaves at a specific time started coming out earlier and if the birds that ate those insects started migrating up earlier as well. But unfortunately species don't change at the same rate and this can cause a gap in those important life events and this is called phenological mismatch. Uh, to help you think about this I have an example. Um, migrating caribou in Greenland rely on timing their migration to their summer ranges so that the period where they reproduce in the summer coincides with peak plant growth period. And so this way all the little calves will have a lot of nutritious food and there will be enough for all of them so they can get strong and prepare for the winter migration. However, the plant growth period, the leaf out, depends on temperature and the caribou migration, they take their cues from length of day. So length of day doesn't change, so they're migrating at the same time every year while the plants are blooming earlier and earlier and this means that now when the caribou move to their summer ranges they've already missed that peak growth period so there's not as much food for their calves as there was in the past and this can cause increased offspring mortality and decreased offspring production which can really affect the caribou populations and can affect predators that rely on caribou. The caribou are not the only species that have see these kinds of effects. Uh, there are drastic effects on a lot of migrating animals because a lot of migrating animals can take their cues from length of day. <laughs> so in addition to telling us about the vulnerability of species, populations, and ecosystems to climate change, phenology can also inform us about um, the timing and severity of allergy and mosquito seasons. It can tell us when to plant crops and when to harvest them, and it can tell us how to manage invasive species. So that was a broad overview of why phenology is important. So now I wanna get into a little bit of the mechanisms of how plants know when to leaf out. So I told you uh, most plants depend primarily on temperature, but what does that mean? Uh, most temperate species have a chilling requirement, which means there need to be a certain number of days over the winter that are at a certain low temperature before they leaf out. So these are called chilling units. So the plants count how many days are below that temperature. And if the, um, even if there's a really warm sunny day, if it hasn't reached those number of cold days, they don't come out. And this is to help protect them from a late frost. So sometimes, you know, there are those warm days in early March, um, the plants don't want to accidentally leaf out then and then lose all their leaves to a frost. So this helps protect them from that. Um, and then after that chilling requirement is met, usually they have a certain number of days above a certain temperature that they need to meet before they leaf out. And some species, like the American beech, they also have a length of day requirement. So in addition to the number of cold days and then the number of warm days, the day length also has to be a certain length. <laughs> um, because, and this is just an additional protection against those late frosts. Um, some species are um, pretty bold and they don't have a, a length of day requirement and they also have less stringent chilling requirements and temperature requirements. This allows them to leaf out earlier so they have the benefit of getting all the early sun without any other leaves blocking them so this can help them grow but it's also dangerous because they can lose all of those leaves to a frost. So they've got a, it's a dangerous game they play but they've got to balance those risks out.
Now that you know a little bit more about phenology, I hope you start to notice the tender little baby leaves this season a little bit more. And to help you appreciate that, I have a fun activity for you to do. You can do this in your backyard or in uh, local woods nearby. Um, so I want you to find a plant like this beech that doesn't have leaves yet. And I want you to take a picture of it every day. Try to do it around the same time. Um, and then at the end of the season, you'll have a really cool time lapse of this amazing process. Um, so I've been doing this for the past few days. Um, I picked a few plants around this property. Um, and even though I generally pay attention to leaf out and I appreciate it, I found that I've started to notice it a lot more. I've started to notice the little daily changes a lot more since I'm looking at the same plant. Um, and it feels like they're my, my children. So I hope you all get to have that fun experience. Um, and if you do make this time lapse, be sure to share it with us um, using hashtag share learn adventure so we can see what you create.